You have fought the great war in order to make the world safe for democracy and to keep our nation free. But your efforts must not stop there. In the future, there will be many forces that try to destroy that freedom. So band together now in order to dedicate yourselves to protecting that freedom which you have so valiantly won on the battlefield. Upon returning home from France in 1919, men of the American Expeditionary Forces formed an organization that became known as the Military Order of the World War, so that veterans would continue to serve their nation. They organized their first national convention at the Statler Hotel in Detroit, Michigan. One officer, Captain Gravenberg, traveling on a train from New Orleans, wrote the preamble to the Constitution on the back of an envelope. With but the slightest change in wording, the preamble to the Order's Constitution remains today as written by the captain. The preamble to the Constitution of the Military Order of the World Wars to cherish the memories and associations of the world wars waged for humanity. The 100th anniversary of the order takes place at Simi Valley, California, where companions gather to work, play, and celebrate our past and future. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel John Hollywood. I have the distinct honor to have been the 88th Commander-in-Chief of the Military Order of the World Wars at our 100th National Convention in Simi Valley, California. The most important thing about the Military Order of the World Wars are the companions. You will find them open, welcoming, and they're a good group of people. Come on down. is Sir Knight, Lieutenant Colonel Ornley Peters, retired. I was born in 1921. I was 24 when I became a member of the Military Order of World Wars. First, it let me know that I belonged to a military organization trying to do the best things they can for the youth of the country. I'm convinced that what we do with uh, the youth of the country is what's going to make this country great. To inculcate and stimulate love of our country and the flag. At the 1920 convention, Major General George Harries was elected the first commander in chief. Knowing the importance of an informed membership, he published the National Magazine, now known as the National Bulletin, which later became the Officer Review. I'm Colonel Kelly Zacco from the Colonel Woods chapter in Oklahoma City. I joined the Military Order World Wars because Colonel Oren Lee Peters asked me to join. He, by the way, offered to pay my first year's membership. After that, I got to know the people and the mission and in, enjoy the fact that we are working with the youth of tomorrow and helping them learn about uh, all that, that we have to offer. In 1926, at the National Convention in Philadelphia, General Pershing made the main address. In his words of inspiration, Now that the Great War is over, I want my staff, my officer corps, 
to continue to serve their country when they return to America. Because it is nobler to serve than to be served. General Harries said, enlisting and nurturing the active interest of General of the Army's John J. Pershing, later to become the first honorary commander-in-chief for life of the order, was a wise and strategic move. Coincidentally, the newly elected M.O.W.W. Commander-in-Chief, or SINC, from that same year was none other than Major General Douglas MacArthur, who would distinguish himself in World War II and Korea. and further patriotic education in our nation. My name is Victor Perez, Brigadier General Victor Perez, retired United States Army. Why do I like the military order world wars? It all starts about being the difference, to be part of the betterment and being better of our communities, our society, and our nation. And we start with our youth and make sure that our youth understands that it's very important to be part of that betterment of society. We are definitely in the route of having a better society, a better community, and a better nation. And that is what we are all about. The military order of the World War's first 100 years has seen a number of outstanding outreach programs to support our communities. In concert with other like-minded organizations, for instance, we, along with the Joe Foss Institute, Boy Scouts of America, Girl Scouts of the USA, Air Force Association, and National Society of Pershing Rifles, host a variety of activities and events ranging from youth education to recognition of excellence. The Military Order conducts youth leadership conferences across the nation, which are approved by the National Association of Secondary School Principals. YLC classes are led by skilled instructors instructors and supervised by well-qualified team leaders and counselors. The goal is 50% of class time dedicated to leadership, 30% of class time devoted to the U.S. government, U.S. history, and the U.S. Constitution, and the remainder devoted to the free enterprise system and the U.S. economy. Chapters support the Boy Scouts of America and the Girl Scouts of the USA by recognizing scouting excellence through MOWW's Eagle Scout, Venture Summit Scout, and Sea Scout Awards, along with Gold Award Certificates of Recognition. Chapters also assist troops and councils in community projects and badge programs. My name is Deborah Kerminer and I'm from the Phoenix Chapter and we are affiliated with the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts in our Massing of the Colors and our Youth Leadership Conference, and we are so delighted that they are affiliated with our chapter. So we use our Girl Scouts and our Massing of the Colors, sometimes almost 80 Girl Scouts and maybe 12 Boy Scouts, and it has helped our Massing uh, every year, and we're delighted, and are also with our um, uh, we try to recruit them for our youth leadership conference, and so we're getting those. And you know, they are delightful students. And I'm delighted to be a member of MRWW for the companionship. Thank you. Our Award of Merit program recognizes cadet excellence by MOWW Companions presenting MOWW awards at Reserve Officer Training Corps and Junior ROTC award ceremonies. Jan Casillas. Lieutenant Colonel, retired, U.S. Marine Corps, U.S. Army Reserve. What do I like about the MOWW? Well, early in my career, I was surrounded by great mentors, 
The MLWW was a gathering place. I had an opportunity to be mentored by some of the senior members who had helped me along in my career. And to this day, uh, they still continue to do that. In addition to that, they're full of new ideas. And uh, the chapter does quite a few things. Uh, most recently, uh, we got into marksmanship and we're attracting younger members because of that, uh, who continue the patriotic ways. Ever to maintain law and order and to defend the honor, integrity, and supremacy of our national government and the Constitution of the United States. Since its inception, the order has focused on contributing to a suitable national law and order policy and honoring those who serve in that arena. Thus, we focus on all public safety functions that ensure the safety and security of Americans. Reginald Brown, Lieutenant Colonel, retired United States Army. I'm also in the Lieutenant General of Troy H. Milton chapter in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Joined MOWW because one, someone asked me. I stayed in MOWW because it's in line with the volunteer work that I do in my private life. In terms of volunteering and philanthropy, giving back to the poor, helping them out of their situation. So it falls in line with what I do in my regular life. It also helps in terms of uh, my veteran service giving back also. The first female Commander-in-Chief is Air Force Captain Deborah Cash. Here's her reaction on being chosen. My name is Debbie Cash and I was the first female SYNC and it was such an honor to be able to hold that position. I had enormous amount of support from all over the country, from Puerto Rico to New England to Seattle to San Diego. It was a wonderful experience to foster fraternal relations among all branches of the armed forces. The order has been honored by having several U.S. presidents as perpetual member of the order. They are Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Nixon, Ford, and Reagan. In addition, Presidents Hoover, Truman, Eisenhower, and Reagan were honorary commanders-in-chief. My name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Michael Allen Oaken, United States Army Retired Medical Corps. And uh, it's important to join the MOWW uh, in order to help veterans in their various difficulties, particularly the newer generation, to educate our next generation of youth in patriotism and uh, education, and leadership. In supporting the other veteran service organizations, we are helping encourage these other veterans. For example, we support uh, housing 
for homeless veterans. Patriotic education is extremely important and is probably one of the main things that we do. And so it's part of our mission is to educate these children for the next generation of leadership so that they can appreciate the uniqueness of our government and what it is that uh, makes us what we are. Veteran outreach helps vets in their respective communities. We encourage the active involvement of each of our chapters in activities that support the military services, deployment and welcome home events, medical care, correction of records, employment counseling, and homeless veterans are also served. My name is Brigadier General Frederick R. Lopez, United States Marine Corps Reserve, retired. Uh, I am the chapter commander for the Colonel George C. Woolsey chapter in Santa Barbara and also a vice commander in chief of our order. I decided to join MOWW because I wanted to stay involved after I retired in the military community and also serving our veterans. I got recruited by a member from my church and I liked what the preamble stands for of our order and that is serving our veterans both past, honoring their memory and the present and also serving the youth of our nation. to promote the cultivation of military, naval, and air science, and the adoption of a consistent and suitable policy of national security for the United States of America, to acquire and preserve records of individual services, to encourage and assist in the holding of commemorations and the establishment of memorials of the world wars. My name is Cheryl Brady. I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel with the U.S. Army. And the thing I like most about the military order of the World Wars is the opportunity to continue serving my country uh, as a patriot. The organization gives me the opportunity to do that uh, while working with the youth as well as our veterans and other programs that we have in the organization that allows us to have community outreach and getting our message out regarding uh, the patriotic nature of our organization. America is a great country and I'm proud to be a member of MOWW to continue serving uh, in this capacity. And so if you love America and you want to continue your patriotic duty and service to America, then join the military order of the World Wars if you are eligible to join to help us continue our mission to invest in the youth in order that we may continue serving this great country of America. All these ideals to posterity, under God and for our country, we unite to establish the military order of the world wars. I see our military order of the world wars making a positive impact on our nation. As our tagline says, serving our local communities, veterans, and our nation, I will dedicate myself and our executive committee to the task of initiating programs that will ensure we have a sustainable growth model. The MOWW motto is, it is nobler to serve than to be served.
Join MOWW. Be a part of the next 100 years with a team of veterans serving our youth, communities, and the United States of America.